Colorado has experienced 17 drought years in the last 20 years, but the state is now working on one of the largest water infrastructure projects in history. A multi-million dollar earthen dam reservoir with an insane capacity that could fill over 136,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. In addition, the project is expected to preserve approximately 1,800 acres of wildlife habitat and maintain 29 aquatic habitat areas along the Colorado River while providing recreational opportunities. How will this project change the way we approach water conservation and management in Colorado and beyond? And what are the cutting edge techniques involved? The story of this project is like something out of a Hollywood movie, but it is shockingly real. The Colorado River Basin is under a level of strain it hasn't experienced in more than a millennium, with drought driving supply down and population growth driving demand up. Scientists have outlined a grim future for the region, predicting that human-caused climate change will shrink the West's water supply. Colorado is built on a system of moving water around. About 80% of Colorado's water falls on the western slope of the Rocky Mountains. But about 80% of the state's 5.8 million people live east of the Rockies. For around 15 decades, those people have relied on a complex system of canals and tunnels that shuttle water across and through the mountains, often to reservoirs that store it for timed release. To put it simply, a reservoir was essential for water storage and is intended to supply water to the Northern Front Range, which includes the populous cities of Fort Collins, Greeley, and Longmont. The advent of the Chimney Hollow Reservoir project in this scene, surrounded by stunning mountains, stands as the best illustration of innovative water management. The reservoir's main purpose is to store water that is moved over the continental divide from the rain and snow-filled western slope. It will paint the bigger picture of creating a safe haven for a wide variety of wildlife while also providing supplemental water for more than half a million people in eight communities around the area. However, hold off judgment until the true complexities are revealed. Building a reservoir involves far more than just gouging a hole in the ground. This project requires the construction of a massive dam, the tallest built in the United States in 25 years. The reservoir will require the removal of millions of cubic yards of earth. A whole dozen northeastern water companies in northeastern Colorado are funding Chimney Hollow Reservoir. Well, it looks justified because the reservoir will provide water and leisure to its communities after construction finishes in 2025. It will serve for 5 to 10 decades at least. In 2016, Stantec was hired to do geotechnical investigation and design for the Chimney Hollow project and is now providing engineering services during construction. Barnard is building the reservoir with a zoned rock fill main dam, saddle dam, reinforced concrete inlet outlet structure, spillway, concrete lined tunnel, and water distribution facilities. Due to the absence of clay at the construction site, the asphalt core of the main dam had to be used. The Chimney Hollow main dam will be the second asphalt cord dam in the US after those in Europe and Canada. The site produces 63,000 tons of aggregate per day, making it Colorado's largest rock fill mine. In this context, an earlier engineering achievement of significant importance comes into play. There was this Colorado Big Thompson project, which originated in the 1930s and was designed to redistribute water from the Colorado River on the western slope over the Continental Divide to communities on the eastern slope, including the Northern Front Range. You guessed right, the Chimney Hollow Reservoir is designed to store water from the Colorado Big Thompson project. This water is primarily from the western slope, where Colorado receives the vast majority of its rain and snow. It is carefully transported across the Continental Divide via a network of canals and tunnels, and then stored in the Chimney Hollow Reservoir until it is needed. 
The total cost of building the reservoir comes to about $500 million, making it roughly $340,000 for each day of construction. Inarguably, some serious transactions are involved here. But wait, there are some statistics that are hard to digest. 90,000 acre feet of water storage capacity, 4 million tons of aggregate processing, and 3.1 million cubic yards of excavation are being bragged here. Just imagine the size of an excavator at work that could dig the foundation of a house with just three scoops, and a waiting dump truck with tires twice the height of a person. The project managers are facing a challenge to place a whole load of rock on the dam every two minutes, five days a week for two and a half years. At first glance, the giant reservoirs, dams, and river projects sprinkled across the United States might seem pretty similar. They hold back vast amounts of water, provide power, and support agriculture and drinking water provisions. However, each one is a testament to the unique water needs of the region it serves and an echo of the challenges faced in its creation. To give you an idea, the Folsom Dam was brought to life in the 1950s, serving a dual purpose, flood control and water storage. This reservoir feeds the thirst of industry, agriculture and the urban areas of the Sacramento Valley. Yet, unlike Chimney Hollow's focus on environmentally sensitive construction, Folsom Dam's story was one of adapting to changing environmental concerns. The installation of a temperature control device years after its completion, for instance, aimed to ensure the survival of downstream fisheries. Then there's Arizona's Glen Canyon Dam, standing tall since the 1960s as part of the colossal Colorado River Storage Project. While it also provides water and produces hydroelectric power, a significant and controversial shadow was cast on Glen Canyon. Its construction led to the submersion of the namesake canyon, triggering an outcry from environmentalists. Now, let's hear out the opposition, too. The reservoir project has faced criticism from environmentalists and other stakeholders who express concerns mainly regarding the potential ecological impacts and water resource management. Critics argue that constructing the Chimney Hollow Reservoir will lead to significant alterations to the landscape and natural habitats, potentially displacing various species of flora and fauna native to the area. They fear that, in the journey to quench the thirst of thousands, many delicate wildflowers and gentle creatures may lose their shelter in the process. They also highlight the potential strain that transferring water from the western slope to Front Range communities could have on the Colorado River. Arguably, reducing the flow rate can cause additional issues for ecosystems and populations downstream. An alternative proposal surfaced that greater emphasis should be placed on water conservation and sustainability practices. They believe that more efficient management and reducing waste could help meet growing water demands without resorting to large infrastructure projects. Despite the fact that the project developers have proposed mitigation plans to address these concerns, critics doubt if these efforts will be adequate to offset the possible repercussions. The reservoir isn't just a mechanical masterpiece, though. It brings much more to the table. Once the construction dust has settled, the project will unveil a shiny new recreational area enveloping 1,600 acres, transforming the local landscape into a paradise for fishing, boating, and hiking enthusiasts. The project promises to contribute to maintaining healthy rivers and streams in the area, supporting local ecosystems and species. In essence, the Chimney Hollow Reservoir promises to be a game-changer for future generations, this $500 million project is a testament to innovative and sustainable water management. This reservoir is an excellent example of how human ingenuity, collaboration, and sharp focus on benefiting not only individuals or communities, but also the environment as a whole can lead to changes that are long-lasting and beneficial. Are you convinced that it will quench the thirst of northern Colorado's population? Or is there any weight in the opposing arguments? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and please do like, share and hit the bell icon. See you in the next video.